Mm. Hello. Ever since I was a young lad, I've always had an interest in the fretworking hobby, and more particularly the companies involved in the hobby, like uh, Hobbies Limited of Derham and Handicrafts. I thought I'd like to do a little video explaining a bit about the fretworking hobby and the handicrafts and hobbies companies themselves. Now, first of all, I should explain the differences. So, fretworking or scroll sawing, what's the difference? In the UK, it used to be referred to as fretworking. In the USA and other countries, they called it scroll saw working. But basically, it is the same thing. Uh, what it means is ornamental design in wood or other materials occasionally, but mostly it's designs cut in wood. The art of fretwork has been found back as far as ancient times. Fretwork became a hobby in Great Britain in the 1880s when John Henry Skinner first decided that he could make a profit out of selling items for the fretwork hobby. He formed a company in the town of East Durham uh, called Hobbies, where he started his business from. It's commonly known as just Durham. Up until the 1960s, all over the world, the name of Hobbies was associated with Durham. Another company involved in fretwork was the Handicrafts Company. This was founded by Frank Skinner, who was the brother of John Henry Skinner, who had founded Hobbies. There was a lot of rivalry between the two companies, and in fact led to many court cases between the two of them. But I will mention a little more of that later on in the video. The hobby of fretworking was very popular in Great Britain right up to the 1950s. The peak years for fretwork were between the years 1890 and 1930. After World War II, fretworking was still a popular hobby because there were not many toys and things in the shops and a lot of people resorted to making their own using fretwork. By the 1960s it was all over and fretwork ceased to be of interest to most people and that was the end of it basically. By 1968, the once famous name of Hobbies Limited had sadly disappeared. Fortunately, the name of Hobbies was to reappear some years later uh, as another company called Hobbies. Uh, uh, but it wasn't the... they didn't manufacture goods, they mostly sold stuff. Uh, it was basically a retail business. The company is still actually trading today under the Hobbies name, uh, using the original Hobbies trademark, which is nice, actually. Nowadays, most people... Uh, do the fret work in or scroll saw in hobby using the motorised powered fret saw uh, but these didn't arrive on the scene till around 1975. The arrival of the Hegner fret saw in 1975 was largely responsible for the resurgence in the fret work in hobby. The Hegner fret saw was patented in Germany by Helmut Abel. The Hegner fret saw is still available to buy today and is considered to be one of the finest quality fret saws one can buy. In its early days, the Hobbies Company, under the name of J.H. Skinner, uh, mostly imported their fretwork machine, uh, or, or, or bought, imported the parts to build them up. But around 1900, they started to build their own machines, such as this A1 machine that you see here. Now, this is the uh, A1 fret machine that my grandfather bought, and as you can see, it does still work fine. Uh, in actual fact, you can still cut wood with it. I don't use it much nowadays, but I'll just do you a quick demonstration. Oh, it works quite well, actually. I'm not very good at this. I'll tell you what, it makes your leg break. But it's probably very good exercise. There you go. So you see, even today, it still works fine. That's a hobbyist treadle machine. It's approximately 120 years old and still in use. How many modern tools today would you buy that are made in China or something that are still going to be going in 120 years time? Not many I suspect. This is quality. This was when they made this they knew how to make products and they didn't make them to last two or three years like modern things today. They made them to last a lifetime and this has lasted for more than a lifetime. Uh, this fret saw was used not only by my my grandfather, it was also used by my father uh, and, and myself later on and uh, eventually it's also been used by my grandson and in this picture here you can see him using it when he was about nine he's a little bit older now but when he was nine he was using this particular fret saw and he still does fret work today by the way and he's extremely good at it I can tell you I think he's he's a lot better at fret work at, at the age of 13 than I was at that age so uh, if he keeps doing it, he'll be really good in the future. Uh, and it is nice to see young people still interested in doing some hobbies because 
most young people today, they're only interested in tablets and mobile phones, aren't they? So, you know, if you find somebody who's interested in a, a hobby like fretwork or woodwork or model railways even, oh, he's interested in all three of those, by the way, <laughs> it's quite nice, actually. Another popular fret machine that Hobbies manufactured was the Imperial model. This first appeared around 1900. In the Hobbies 1912 catalogue, it's described as being one of the most popular and complete treadle machines, cheap, graceful in appearance and accurate in working. The Imperial has to be one of my favourite treadle fret stores, mainly because my grandfather once had one. When I was a young lad, just after my grandfather passed away, I had the task of sorting out his old shed where he kept his fretwork stuff and I found his old Hobbies Imperial fret machine in the shed and I could have had it and taken it home. At the time I had the Hobbies A1 fretwork machine and being a youngster I was more interested in uh, motorcycling and, and the ladies than I was in fretwork at the time although I did still hold an interest and I also had my trusty A1 machine that I, I've still got here today uh, and so I let it go and sadly it went for scrap and uh, I've bitterly regretted it ever since, ever since. There's hardly a month goes by when I don't think of that old Hobbies Imperial machine that my grandfather had and I, I dearly wish I'd kept it. This photo shows my late father at his father's Hobbies Imperial fretworking machine together with a good display of many of the items he's made. Of course in the early days of fretwork most fretworking was carried out with the hand frames such as these here. This is a Hobbies hand frame. Uh, this one I've had since I was a young lad. I can tell it's my original one because the, the original knob broke and I turned another one on my lathe at the time for it, but I've still got that after many, many years. Uh, these are some other models. Uh, as you can see, they're slightly larger frames. And this one here is a, a smaller size frame for different purposes. There's nothing wrong with using a hand frame. Uh, it is quite hard work. It's much harder than using the machine because you, you've got both hands in use, one to hold the work and another one to hold the frame. I've got a, a couple of pieces of work here to show you. This is a piece of fretwork called the Gamekeeper, which I cut out when I was about 12. As you can see from the back, there is actually writing on the back, which says REF station. The reason for this is that we didn't have decent timber to use in those days, then this is plywood and it's actually made from old tea chests. In fact, all of our fretwork in those days, we're talking about the 50s and 60s, 1950s and 1960s, all the fretwork we did, both my dad and myself, was done on old tea chests that we got from the RAF station where he worked. So that's the one I cut out when I was about 12. And here I've got another one. This one is one I cut out more recently. I made this one about a year or so ago just to see if I could still do it, basically. Uh, that's the original and this is the, uh, I cut this one out in, in solid mahogany but obviously I didn't have access to solid mahogany when I made this one. But as you can see they are very similar. I think I've actually got a bit better than I was when I was 12. Although for a 12 year old that's not bad I don't think even though I say it myself. So you know a hand frame can be used for fret work and I have actually used it. I still use it today for certain jobs but it is much easier on a machine especially a motorised one. The other thing to say is, of course, that although fretwork machines, treadle machines, were available from the 1890s, uh, most people couldn't afford them. Uh, they don't seem a great deal of money now if you look in the old catalogues, but at the time it was a great deal of money to pay for a machine and most people could not afford it. For example, in 1912 the Hobbies Imperial fretwork machine was available for the grand sum of £2. That's £2 in the United Kingdom, by the way. You have to take into account that back in 1912, the average wage for a working man was around £67 a year, which works out about £1.29 a week. So the price of a fretwork machine at £2 was an awful lot of money, and not many people could afford them. Hobbies went on to produce many, many different models of fretworking machines over the years. Uh, too many to mention here, but I am doing a, I am working on a website on the history of the hobbies and handicraft companies, which should be online in the not too distant future, I hope. It's taken me quite a long time to do it, and I do list all of the models they made, or almost all of them, on my website. 
Two companies dominated in the sales and supply of fretwork related items, tools and supplies, that being Hobbies Limited and the Handicrafts Company. Most of the customers would have used a hand frame and both companies offered a choice of such saws. This is the Hobbies standard hand frame. Two features on this saw made it popular, one being the quick release blade tension device which was brilliant for retention after you changed the blade and the other one was the adjustable screw on the bottom which meant that you could adjust this distance here and hereby use a, a broken blade rather than throw it away. Uh, if a blade broke near the blade holder, which it, it did quite often, you could simply wind this handle this way, clockwise direction, uh, looking this way, and this would adjust the blade holder upwards. You could then reinsert the broken off, the bit of the blade that hadn't broken off in, and tighten it back up again, and you were away without actually putting a new blade in. Uh, obviously, cost nowadays the blades are plentiful and cheap, but in those days perhaps they weren't always available and they were more expensive probably. And uh, during wartime, when people were still doing a bit of fret work, um, blades were probably difficult to obtain. If you're doing a lot of internal cuts, of course, you've got to keep taking the blade out to poke it through a hole in the work and then reattach it to continue cutting internally. And then when you finish, do the reverse, take it out again. And each time would mean retention in the saw blade. Well, if you've got a quick release cam like this, it's marvellous because you just pop it in, tighten it up and you're away again. Even today, a lot of modern machines don't have this sort of feature on and you've still got to fiddle about adjusting the thing after you put it in, which is really annoying if you're doing lots of internal cuts. So that was a very useful feature at the time. I don't know why I've got this interest in the Hobbies and Handicrafts companies. It's something I've had ever since I was very young. I've always been interested and over the years, I've collected as many old Hobbies annuals and Hobbies designs as I possibly could. It, they're like a magnet to me, I have no idea why. To most people, if they found an old Hobbies design, they'd just chuck it in their recycling bin. Uh, my brother's one, one such. There's it's no interest whatsoever to most people, but to a few people like myself, they're, they're gold dust. Uh, and I, I, I just like anything that Hobbies did. Uh, it reminds me of the old days, perhaps. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because my grandfather was keen in it on it, but um, I've always been interested in Hobbies. And I'm still interested today, just as I was even more so probably than I was when I was younger.